Bon a locale, my garden of roses. We have a rather dire story to discuss today, and that is the story of the shooting that took place in Marshall County, Kentucky yesterday. I'm going to start with just the facts, so if you don't want to hear any of my opinions, you'll only have to listen to the very beginning of this video. Here's what we know so far. A 15-year-old student opened fire at Marshall County High School around 8 a.m. local time Tuesday on students gathered in a common area before classes had begun. The student's identity is currently undisclosed due to the fact that he's a juvenile. However, the local prosecutor wishes to charge him as an adult with both murder and attempted murder. If he is charged as an adult, his identity would be made public. There were two students who were killed, 15-year-old Bailey Nicole Holt, who was killed at the scene, and 15-year-old Preston Ryan Cope, who died later of his injuries at the hospital. More than 15 other students are reported as injured, with 12 reported gunshot wounds and other, others injured in the ensuing chaos of trying to escape. Police apprehended the shooter rather quickly and took him into custody without incident after he ran out of ammunition and attempted to flee the scene. Marshall County High School is 30 minutes from Heath High School in Paddocott, Kentucky, the scene of a 1997 school shooting, which killed three and injured five. This is, of course, the ninth school shooting, or excuse me, the ninth shooting reported as a school shooting in 2018, despite most of those shootings only resulting in suicide or no injuries whatsoever. This comes only a day after a 16-year-old student in Italy, Texas, shot a 15-year-old girl, wounding but not killing her. She is currently in the hospital recovering from her injuries. In Seattle, Washington, at New Start High School, an unidentified shooter fired bullets into the administrative office, but no one was injured, and that is still under investigation by the police. In Sierra Vista, Arizona, a 14-year-old shot himself in the head at Coronado Elementary School inside the bathroom. In St. John's, Michigan, a 31-year-old man pulled into the parking lot at East Olive Elementary School called 911 and reported that he was suicidal. He shot himself and died from the injuries. However, fortunately, the school was closed at the time. At Winston-Salem University in North Carolina, 21-year-old Najee Ali Baker got into an argument at a sorority party when the other individual shot him, killing him. The police are still investigating this incident and the shooter is the location of the shooter is unknown at this time. Now, while I suspect this shooting will result in the demands for greater gun control, as every school shooting does, I personally don't see this as a gun control issue. If a person wants a gun, they're going to get their hands on one, whether they're a child or not. I personally see this as a problem with how mental health is managed, especially with regards to young men and those from violent households in the United States. There's no information as to this child, the 15-year-old who opened fire in Kentucky just yesterday. However, what we're finding out about the people who died, uh, these people were random targets. Uh, no one was directly targeted and most of the people who were shot and killed or injured uh, were generally nice people. Uh, people that no one had any negative comments to make about. People who, you know, for the most part, very likely should not have died. But the fact of the matter is, young men especially in the modern world are given almost no support when something goes wrong and have the blame put on them for so much that having lived in the United States as long as I have, I'm not terribly surprised at the large discrepancy towards male shooters in school shootings. It's not a matter of toxic masculinity. It's a matter of the fact that these schools don't offer the kind of assistance 
for mental health for male students. They don't even have an idea of how to help male students. So when a situation becomes as extreme as this situation has to the point where a student feels the necessity or loses their mind and decides to shoot up other students, an act I will state I do not agree with whatsoever. I personally think that the schools need to be held responsible for the fact that they offer no kind of genuine mental health assistance for these young male students. I also find it remarkably disingenuous for the gun control activists from which I got this list of school shootings in 2018 to count suicides in their school shooting statistics, as well as shootings on closed schools and shootings that start off the property of the uh, campus and happen to have bullets arrive at the campus on a, a bullet hitting a building or passing through a window. This severely skews the statistics for school shootings and misrepresents them because when people think of a school shooting, they're not thinking of a person committing suicide, especially not a 30 year one, excuse me, a 31 year old PTSD ugh, veteran suffering from PTSD killing themselves or a young student killing themselves in the bathroom. And they especially aren't considering that gunshots fired from off campus due to gang violence or disagreements leading to a bullet, a stray bullet, mind you, arriving and hitting a window or building at the campus. I don't want to see this become another sticking point and wedge for politicians to dig in and say that we need gun control. I want people to actually respect the fact that two, two teenagers died today, excuse me, yesterday, forgive me. And what we're seeing is not a growing problem, it is an exaggerated problem, but a large problem nonetheless. My thoughts are with the families of the people in Kentucky today, and I'm terribly sorry for this being the second shooting in that general community in the last 20 years. I hope everyone is able to find some sort of peace in a vigil, although it's safe to say that the family members of Nicole, excuse me, Bailey Nicole Holt and Preston Ryan Cope are going to be very disturbed by this for some time. Thank you all for listening and I'll catch you next time.